year? 2013? I don't know either. 2012? Good morning, friends. Welcome in the name of Jesus, the Savior of the world. My name is Pastor Sean, and I'm glad that all of you got the message that we are at one service at 9.30 this morning, as we will be until after Labor Day in September. It's a great chance for us to join our two worshiping crowds between the 8.30 service and the 10.30 service in one, um, in one centralized worship during these summer months. Because we're combining our two services, we're trying to either make everyone happy or make everyone mad. I don't know which it is. But we'll sing half, uh, we'll sing two, two of our four uh, hymns, or two of our four songs will be traditional hymns. Two of our four songs will be our more contemporary songs from the 830 worship. And we'll repeat that pattern every week all summer long. Speaking of our worship, everything you need to worship is in the bulletin. You might have grabbed one on the way in. If you didn't, fear not. The words for all of our parts and our scripture readings will also be written on these screens. When the time comes for our baptism, there's a separate um, insert with the bulletin. And speaking of the baptism, we welcome you and your family and friends in particular for this very special day for JJ. We're delighted to watch as, as we all get the reminder of just how wonderfully and preciously he is made by God, our creator, and claimed for, for a, a life of discipleship. There's Alehouse Church tomorrow. Um, I haven't quite picked a topic yet, but I think I've got a good one. But I hope everyone will join us. Beer Justice is closed on Mondays, but don't let that steer you away. They're opening for us around 6, and they'll stay open through the duration of our 7 to 8 o'clock meeting. All the other announcements are at the end of the bulletin. You can take a peek at them on your own. After the second song, we'll invite all the kids, fourth grade and under, to come forward for a special children's message, and then those kids who would like are welcome to leave with Mrs. Dressel, and they'll come back for the baptism later in the service. Please stand as you're able. Let's join in song.
your praise. Our hearts will cry, these moans will sing. Great are you, Lord. And all the earth will shout your praise. Our hearts will cry, these bones will sing. of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God who greets us in this and every season, whose word never fails, and whose promise is sure. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of our neighbors. Merciful God, we confess that we have sinned. We have hurt our community. We have squandered your blessings. We have hoarded your bounty. In the name of Jesus, forgive us and grant us your mercy. God is a cup of cold water when we thirst. God offers boundless grace when we fail. Claim the gift of God's mercy. You are freed and you are forgiven in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen.
us pray. O oh God, you are the source of life and the ground of our being. By the power of your spirit, bring healing to this wounded world and raise us to the new life of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Please be seated and would the children please come forward. Hello, my friends. Are you so excited? Good. Today, I wanted to tell you about a guy named Matthew. Do you know any Matthews? Oh, you know a couple Matthews? Do they have jobs? None of the Matthews you know have a job? Oh, we gotta, we got to find them some things to do. Oh, you know a Matthew with a job? What's his job? He works at your grandpa's barn? Yeah, that's a good job. Oh, man. He's getting it. He's, oh, he's getting that bread. That's what the kids say. Now you guys are hipping with it, okay? You can say it too. Hi. Do you see your teacher? I know. Well, the Matthew I want to tell you about. Oh, yes, please, Grace. I know Matthew in the Bible, but his job is carpenter. It is, but guess what? He had another job first. Do you know what his job was first? We're going to hear about him today. Are you talking about him today? Something different. That's okay. Then it's a good thing we're talking about him now. Yeah. Yeah. So the Matthew in the Bible, his job was to collect taxes. There, were, there have been taxes forever. Yeah, I know. Now, how does that make you feel? Do you guys like taxes? You do? Yeah, they already know. What are taxes? Yeah, what do, what do you think? That's true. It's like another thing we have to pay to live, right? I know, taxes get a bad rap, but you're right, sort of. We, we, we do pay taxes because, you know, we all share uh, this place that we live and we want it to work out nicely for all of us. But there's a reason we don't like it, and that's because we have to give it up. So sometimes the people who collect those taxes, guess how people feel about them? Not so hot, right? They think they're the bad guys sometimes. Well, in today's Bible reading, there's a man named Matthew, and he's sitting at a booth, and he is collecting taxes. And Jesus comes along, and what do you think Jesus says to him? No, he didn't say that. What did he say? Thumbs up? Keep up the good work? No, he didn't say that either. No, no. He said, follow me. And Matthew was hard at work. He was sitting at his booth. He was collecting all of his taxes. Jesus walked by and said, follow me. And what do you think Matthew did next? Him. He did. He stood up and he followed him. And we see that same story other places too. For instance, Jesus is walking by the sea. And guess what? There are people who are, again, hard at work. In this case, they're fishing. And Jesus sees them. And even though they're hard at work fishing, Jesus says, follow me. And what do they do? Follow him, yeah. And then they go a little bit further down the lake, and there are other people mending their nets. nets. They're fixing all their equipment. They're working again, and Jesus sees them. And what does he say? Follow me. And what do you think they do? Follow him. Yeah, they follow him. Yes, they follow him. Now, here's why I think it's important, for two reasons. One, one we forget that Jesus has always called busy people to follow him. Jesus has always called people who are busy doing other things to follow him. And sometimes it's easy for us to think, well, I can't follow him. I'm collecting taxes. I can't follow him. I'm fishing in my boat. I can't follow him. I'm mending my nets. But Jesus calls us out of our ordinary lives to follow him. Jake Romance. No. Well, we don't know that. Not him in particular, but some did. That's kind of why they have a bad rap. Um, 
But I was going to say one more thing, and it's about this little guy. Look at him. He's so cute. Do you think if I pick him up, he'll cry? Okay, let's see. Okay. Oh, now he's definitely going to cry. I was a jump scare. He's fine. This is our friend. His nickname is JJ. What do you think about JJ? Do you know what's super cool about JJ today? You know how I told you about that guy named Matthew who, who Jesus saw, and he's like, hey, come and follow me. Well, guess what we get to hear Jesus say to JJ today? Yeah. And you know where we get to hear those words? Look behind you. Yes, JJ is going to be baptized. And when JJ is baptized, and when we remember just how much God loves him, we get to hear God's invitation to JJ, and the same invitation to all of us who have tried to follow Jesus, and that's to live lives that love God and love the people we meet through the words that we say and the things that we do. So JJ, today, you get called to follow, and we're all going to try to join him and follow too. Well, can we say a prayer? Yes, he's going to get a little wet. He's so cute. Let's pray. Dear God, we thank you for calling us to follow you. We thank you for the waters of baptism, where today we get to hear you call JJ to follow you too. Help us to be like Matthew. Help us to be like JJ. Help us to follow you wherever you go. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right. We'll break on three, and you can head out with Mrs. Dressel. Ready? One, two, three. I know, he's so cute. He's so cute. Thank you. I'm sorry. Hi, how are you? Our first reading is a reading from the book of the prophet Hosea. I will return again to my place until they acknowledge their guilt and seek my face. In their distress, they will beg my favor. Come, let us return to the Lord, for it is he who has torn, and he will heal us. He has struck down, and he will bind us up. After two days, he will revive us. On the third day, he will raise us up that we may live before him. Let us know, let us press on to know the Lord. His appearing is as sure as the dawn. He will come to us like the showers, like the spring rains that water the earth. What shall I do with you, O Ephraim? What shall I do with you, O Judah? Your love is like a morning cloud, like the dew that goes away early. Therefore, I have hewn them by the prophets. I have killed them by the words of my mouth, and my judgment goes forth as the light. For I desire steadfast love and not sacrifice, the knowledge of God rather than burnt offerings. This is the word of the Lord. Our second reading is a letter from, from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans, chapter 4. The promise that he would inherit the world did not come to Abraham or to his descendants through the law, but through the righteousness of faith. If it is the adherents of the law who are to be the heirs, faith is null and the promise is void. For the law brings wrath, but where there is no law, neither is there violation. For this reason, it depends on faith, in order that the promise may rest on grace and be guaranteed to all its descendants, not only to the adherents of the law, but also to those who share the faith of Abraham for he is the father of all of us, as it is written, I have made you the father of many nations. In the presence of the God in whom he believed, who gives life to the dead and calls into existence the things that do not exist. Hoping against hope, he believed that he would become the father of many nations. According to what was said, so numerous shall your descendants be. He did not weaken in faith when he considered his own body, which was already as good as dead, for he's, he was about a hundred years old, or when he considered the barrenness of Sarah's womb. 
No distrust made him waver concerning the promise of God, but he grew strong in his faith as he gave glory to God, being fully convinced that God was able to do what he had promised. Therefore his faith was reckoned to him as righteousness. Now the words it was reckoned to him were written not for his sake alone, but for ours also. It will be reckoned to us who believe in him, who raised Jesus our Lord from the dead, who was handed over to death for our trespasses and raised for our justification. This is the word of the Lord. We stand for the gospel acclamation and the reading of the Holy Gospel. Gospel according to St. Matthew, the ninth chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. As Jesus was walking along, he saw a man called Matthew sitting at the tax booth, and he said to him, Follow me. And he got up and he followed him. And as he sat at dinner in the house, many tax collectors and sinners were sitting with him and his disciples. When the Pharisees saw this, they said to his disciples, Why does your teacher eat with tax collectors and sinners? But when Jesus heard this, he said, Those who are well have no need of a physician, but those who are sick. Go and learn what this means. I desire mercy, not sacrifice. For I have come not to call the righteous, but sinners. While he was saying these things to them, suddenly a leader of the synagogue came in and knelt before him, saying, My daughter just died, but come and lay your hand on her and she will live. And Jesus got up and followed him with his disciples. Then suddenly a woman who had been suffering from hemorrhages for twelve years came up behind him and touched the fringe of his cloak. For she said to herself, If I only touch his cloak, I will be made well. Jesus turned, and seeing her, he said, Take heart, daughter. Your faith has made you well. And instantly the woman was made well. When Jesus came to the leader's house and saw the flute players in the crowd making a commotion, he said, Go away, for the girl is not dead, but sleeping. And they laughed at him. But when the crowd had been put outside, he went in, and he took her by the hand, and the girl got up. And the report, the report of this spread throughout that district. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Please be seated. You guys want to talk about scandals today? Should we? As modern Americans, we're more than familiar with scandals, aren't we? The HBO, uh, an HBO just came out with a new television series called uh, White House Plumbers. Have you heard of it? You know what it's about? Watergate, sure. Have you heard of that? Good for you. We're more than familiar, I'll add, with the inappropriate relations of former presidents. Just nod if you've heard something about that before. Guys, I told you, we're getting after it today. We've had wardrobe malfunctions at Super Bowls. We've had accusations of racism within the royal family. Heck, even Martha Stewart has done some prison time. All scandalous, right? With each high-profile offender's indiscretion, 
comes the public response. It comes uh, our outrage, the passing of judgments, the demand for accountability, the longing to see them dragged through the mud in the name of justice. In fact, I could preach a different sermon about how we're probably a little too quick to do these things and how we secretly enjoy them a little bit too much. But that's not what I want to talk about today. Instead, my point in bringing up those things is that there are all sorts of things that leaders and people in high-profile places have done in public that are really inappropriate. There are all sorts of things that, that leaders have done that are disappointing. There are all sorts of things that are scandalous. They're shocking, they're outrageous, and they're enraging. But in light of those things, I want to focus on the scandal in the beginning of this morning's gospel. Ooh, it's juicy, isn't it? Jesus is walking along and he sees Matthew hard at work collecting taxes and he says, follow me. Matthew gets up and follows and a little while later they're at dinner and even more tax collectors and sinners come and they're sitting with Jesus. That's a good scandal, am I right? Aren't you outraged? Aren't you outraged? You're not? Okay. Aren't you disappointed in him? Astonished? Hopefully not, right? Hopefully we look at that and we find comfort in Jesus' response to people in need. But we know from the story that not everyone who saw the dinner crowd was impressed. The Pharisees, and we will see their contempt reappear in the next couple of weeks, so come back for some more. But they found Jesus eating with tax collectors and sinners, and they thought that was scandalous. They even went so far as to ask the disciples how Jesus could do something so outrageous like that. And here's why I want us to name what makes it scandalous. Because what makes this scandalous is that Jesus is, is merely with people that they had written off and cast out. This would have been a, a, a scandal if Jesus had become a tax collector. Do we agree? That would be a scandal, right? Jesus hanging out with the tax collector is not altogether that offensive. Jesus' argument back is, I'm helping them. And that's what I want to name. Since when is helping someone a scandal? Right? But of course, it's, it's not that, that he's helping that they find offensive. What they found offensive is that, that did, that's not what they thought faithfulness was supposed to look like. And so that's the question for us. What does faithfulness look like? That's the root of this scandal. Because to the Pharisees, faithfulness looked like ritual. And it looked like routine. And it looked like observance of a certain practice of faith to certain customs. It looked like a sort of religious purity. That's what faithfulness looked like. But Jesus was showing them and he was showing us that faithfulness doesn't look like a ritual. Faithfulness looks like mercy. Faithfulness lived out looks like people not who go to church all the time and read the Bible out in public and pray on street corners. Faithfulness is helping people. Helping people who are in need. So he said to them, and this is the line that counts, go and learn what this means. I, I desire mercy, not sacrifice. So what's it mean? I desire mercy, not sacrifice. The question for us is, I, to start, what does it mean by sacrifice? And I can assure you, Jesus isn't talking about laying down his life for a friend. He's talking about what the prophet Hosea was talking about in the first reading that John read this morning. He's talking about people who thought that sacrifice was about burning up goats and playing trumpets. And, and, and Hosea was saying, I require love, not more burnt goats. 
Uh, don't, don't go out and treat people poorly, but then come in here with a bag full of cash and think that you and I are square because I care how you actually treat people. I'll give you a really silly example. When I was 18, I, I attended a statewide church meeting uh, with a couple hundred of other folks from across Western New York. I, as you can tell from just how that story started, wasn't the most popular 18-year-olds. Not, not, most 18-year-olds aren't attending statewide church meetings with a couple hundred of, of their friends. I was there repping my church from Jamestown. I was there serving as a part of a, a, a staff for a youth event that was happening at the same time. And I was on a committee for the event that looked at the things we would be talking about together. In addition, they invited me to share briefly from the front of the room a few details about being a young person coming of age in the church at uh, the you know, Y2K era. I went up front looking a lot like a young person coming, to, coming of age around 2000. Ripped jeans, t-shirt, baseball cap. I'm pretty sure it was facing forward, but I can't remember. When I finished and I came off the stage, there was thunderous applause. I'm just kidding. There wasn't thunderous applause. I made that up. When I came off, I was greeted by a couple of friends, and then I watched as a man approached. I assumed, mistakenly, he was coming over to say, hey, good job getting up in front of a couple hundred people and speaking. But instead, when he arrived, he proceeded to express his sincere disappointment, not in the words that I said, but in, guess what? My appearance. How I looked. In particular, he was disappointed my, by my decision to wear a hat while indoors and while speaking to a room full of people. As he shared, I realized what the expression wind out of your sails means. You know what I mean? I came off elated and um, with adrenaline pumping, and I was quickly filled with shame and disappointment. But before I could even respond, a pastor, and this might be a big part of why I'm a pastor today, because this was a very formative experience. A pastor overheard the encounter and interrupted the man in the middle of his remarks and said, that's what you took? from the presentation? There's an 18-year-old kid representing his church, working for his peers, helping this event, and you want to talk about his hat? You're missing the point. He could have responded, go and learn what this means. I desire mercy, not sacrifice. I desire mercy. Love, not strictest observance to rituals. And I'll keep hitting this again and again. What made Jesus' actions in this morning's gospel scandalous and offensive was that he was being kind. That's the scandal, that Jesus was being kind how merciful he was to people he didn't have to be, how loving he was to people who had already been cast out. When he saw broken people, he didn't judge them. He helped them. The same example and the same invitation is set before us. The people of God gathered in this place and the people who are still trying to discover what it means to follow Jesus, like he said. I can assure you, it's not about sacrifice, but it is about living a life of mercy. Let's sing.
seated. And would our baptismal party please come forward? And if someone wants to warn Mrs. Dressel, we're going to start. That way, any of the children who want to come back in for a peek at JJ's special. Is he ready? <laughs> In baptism, our gracious Heavenly Father frees us from sin and death by joining us to the death and the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. We are born children of a fallen humanity by water and the Holy Spirit. We are reborn children of God and made members of the church, the body of Christ. Living with Christ and in the communion of saints, we grow in faith, love, and obedience to the will of God. called by the Holy Spirit, and trusting in the grace and love of God, do you desire to have Jack baptized into Christ? As you bring him to receive the gift of baptism, you are entrusted with responsibilities to live with him among God's faithful people, bring him to the word of God and the Holy Supper, teach him the Lord's Prayer, the Creed, and the Ten Commandments, place in his hands the Holy Scriptures, and nurture him in faith and prayer so that he may learn to trust God Proclaim Christ through word and deed. Care for others in the world God made and work for justice and peace. Do you promise to help Jack grow in the Christian faith and life? Godparents, do you promise to, to nurture Jack in the Christian faith as you're empowered by God's spirit and to help him live in the covenant of baptism and in communion with the church? People of God, do you promise to support Jack and pray for him in his new life in Christ? We stand as you're able. I ask you to profess your faith in Christ Jesus, reject sin, and confess the faith of the church. Do you renounce the devil and all the forces that defy God? Do you renounce the powers of this world that rebel against God? Do you renounce the ways of sin that draw you from God? Do you believe in God the Father? I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God? I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe in God, the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Please be seated, and if any kids want a closer look, now's a good time to find a patch of rug at the front. The Lord be with you. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. We give you thanks, O God, for in the beginning your spirit moved over the waters, and by your word you created the world, calling forth life in which you took delight. Through the waters of the flood you delivered Noah and his family. Through the sea, you led your people, Israel, from slavery into freedom. At the river, your son was baptized by John and anointed with the Holy Spirit. By the baptism of Jesus' death and resurrection, you set us free from the power of sin and death, and you raise us up to live in you. Pour out your Holy Spirit, the power of your living word, that those who are washed in the waters of baptism may be given new life. To you be given honor and praise through Jesus Christ our Lord in the unity of the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Ready?
Jack Jeffrey, I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. And all God's people said, Let us pray. We give you thanks, O oh God, that through water and the Holy Spirit, you give your daughters and sons new birth, cleanse them from sin, and raise them to eternal life. Sustain Jack with the gift of your Holy Spirit, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord, the spirit of joy in your presence, now and forever. Amen. Jack Jeffrey, child of God, you have been sealed with the Holy Spirit and marked with the cross of Christ forever. Let your light so shine before others that they may see your good works and glorify our Father in heaven. Let us welcome the newly baptized. We welcome you into the body of Christ and into the mission we share. Join us in giving thanks and praise to God and bearing God's creative and redeeming word to all the world. A round of applause. You did it. You did it. The peace of Christ be with you always. Let's take a moment to share a sign of that peace with one another. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Good job. Here's this goodie bag. Thank you. Leave it all behind. Leave it all behind. Leave it all behind. Leave it all behind. I have what you need, but you keep on searching. I've done all the work. But you keep on working when you're running on empty you can't find the remedy just come to the well and all who thirst will thirst no more and all who God of field and forest, sea and sky, you are the giver of all good things. Sustain us with these gifts of your creation 
and multiply your graciousness in us that the world may be fed with your love through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Lift up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, it's our duty and joy that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death in the grave and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the host of heaven, we praise your name as we sing this song. So bring me your heart, no matter how broken, just come as you are, when your last prayer is spoken, just rest in my arms a while, you feel the change, my child, when you come to the well. And all who thirst will thirst no more. And all who search will find what their souls long for. The world will try, but it can never fill. So leave it all behind and come to the well. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took a bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sin as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. We'll commune this morning at the head of the center aisle. Generally speaking, we'll start in the front and we'll work our way toward the back. As you come forward, you'll receive a piece of bread here in the middle. You may eat it immediately. And then as we make our way across the front, there's trays. The lighter liquid is wine, and the dark purple liquid is juice. There's tiny baskets for the disposal of cups on each side of the sanctuary, and we'll make our way back to our seats down the outside aisles for prayer and reflection. This is Jesus' table. All is ready, and everyone is welcome.
could not see for the fog in my eyes. I could not be for the fear in my life. And from across the great divide, in the distance I saw a light. John the Baptist was walking to me with a finger. Brother John, have you seen the homeless daughters standing there with broken wings? I have seen. This one, no. <laughs> I know.
Please stand as you're able. The body and the blood of our Lord Jesus strengthen us and keep us in his grace. Amen. We thank you, generous God, for the refreshment we have received at your banquet table. Send us now to spread your generosity into all the world through the one who is our dearest treasure, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. The God who calls across the cosmos and speaks in the smallest seed, bless, keep, and sustain us now and to the end of the age. Amen. Amen. If you've been walking the same old road for miles and miles If you've been hearing the same old voice of the same old lies If you're trying to fill the same old holes inside There's a better life There's a better life If you've got pain if you feel lost, he's a way maker. If you need freedom or saving, he's a prison shaking savior. If you got chains, he's a chain breaker. We've all searched for the light of day in the dead of night. We've all found ourselves worn out from the same old fight. We've all run to things we know just ain't right. When there's a better life, there's a better life. If you got pain. chains he's a chain breaker if you believe it if you receive it if you can feel it somebody testify if you believe it if you receive it, oh yeah, if you can feel it, somebody testify, testify. If you believe it, if you receive it, if you can feel it, somebody testify. If you got it, he's a pain taker. If you feel lost, he's a way maker. If you need a freedom, a saving, he's a prison shaking savior. If you got chains, he's a chain breaker. Oh, if you need a freedom, a saving, he's a prison shaking savior. If you got chains, Go in peace, share the harvest. Thanks be to God.